In today's video, we're going to finish the roof of my cardboard dollhouse. It's time to work on the roof, but first I need to finish the edges here before I put the roof on because it'll be hard to work in this area because the roof is going to overhang a little. I don't need to worry about this part, but I definitely need to finish off this edge. I did add some little pieces to bring it all flush so everything is flush this way. But I need to add a piece right here, the width of that space to give it a finished edge like I have done here. I am using matte board strips cut the width of the roof or the thickness of the roof. This piece was too wide, so I'm drawing a line on the back side. I will cut it down so that it matches the width of the roof. I check to be sure my cut is right before gluing in place. There's always one more thing. I decided to add trim on the underside of the roof for a cleaner looking edge. And since I was doing finishing details, I also decided to add trim to the back wall and along the center of the roof. Then I added baseboard on the three sides of the attic room. Now that the attic space is completely finished, it's back to the roof. I first wanted to strengthen the roof, so I pulled out these mailing envelopes that are free from the post office. I checked their width, which seemed pretty good, giving me an overhang on both the front and the back, which is what I wanted. The length, however, was a little long, so back to the cutting table. I thought to use my mat cutter, but I could not use the cutting blade because the cardboard was too thick when I folded over the one side. So I pulled out my craft knife. I could still use the straight edge of the mat cutter. Since they are a double thickness, I thought that would work pretty good to add an extra layer to the roof. Also, they're very smooth type of cardboard. I only cut off one layer of the double thickness where it will bend over the rooftop ridge. On the opposite end, I need to shorten the length after measuring for the length, I needed to allow about a half inch overhang on the side eaves. But I also want to leave a section to fold over, giving me a clean edge. I used the rounded edge of a toothpick to score where I wanted to fold the cardboard, just because it was handy. <laughs> They're going to fit together like this, with one layer from each side folded over top of the peak of the roof. I felt that that would be a good way to hold it and it would give strength to the very top edge of the roof as well. It fits the way I want it to. Now it's time to glue on this strengthening layer. I need to spread the glue quickly on one side of the roof. I just do a half of the roof at a time. Then I glue down the flap. Using my craft knife, I made a V-shaped wedge down the center without cutting all the way through. That removed excess bulk so that I could fold the foam core at the peak. I use a white pencil to mark the length needed. I had a piece of black foam core, so I guess my roof is going to be black. I had wanted it green, but I didn't have any green. Now I need to cut on the white line. I needed to dispense with a lot of glue rapidly, so I poured some glue in a small bowl and I used a paintbrush to spread the glue over one half of the roof. When I get done with this bowl, I 
wash it out because I use this bowl for like samples of paint when I'm just doing a small job or when I'm lettering signs I, I put paint in that bowl sometimes I will mix a certain color with watercolor paint I use acrylic paint in it and sometimes I use this little bowl for gluing with a paintbrush and if I'm going to use a paintbrush I make sure that as soon as I'm done gluing I go straight to the sink I wash out the bowl everything comes off clean because it's a porcelain bowl and I wash my brush very thoroughly never forget about that or you will destroy your brushes I don't use my really good fine painting brushes for this usually a, a cheaper brush for design feature. I wanted to make the roof look like a metal roof so I cut really thin strips of black mat board. I marked the placement of the strips with a white pencil. The width of the ruler is the distance between the strips that way that'll be uniform all the way through and I didn't want one on the very very edge so I left a little gap before I started marking them. Back to the cutting table. I had used up all the strips I had cut, not wanting to cut up the entire board because what if I don't need that many? So I stopped when I thought I had had enough. Well now, since I have all the white lines, I just count the lines and I know exactly how many to cut. I make sure to match the strips to the ones on the other side. I try to cut the end so it's slightly beveled so that it comes together with a nice peak. I'm just using scissors, so. That looks pretty cool, but I'm not done yet. The overhang eaves need to be finished off to hide the mailer markings. So once again, I used mat board to make strips, the width of the overhang, to cover the underside of the gable eaves. like to have finished edges. So I cut a black strip of black mat, mat board, the width of the thickness of the roof, and glued them on. gave it a pretty good look but I'm still not done yet there are two more finishing touches yet to go looking good but what about the side eaves I used white paint to paint the underside covering up the red and blue markings of the mailing envelopes after the paint dried I also added black strip cut the width needed to give the side eaves a finished look we're not done yet just as in a real house a piece of trim is needed where the walls meet the eaves so I cut and added a strip to give the gabled edge on the back of the house a more finished look I already did the front remember I did that at the beginning of the video there is still one more thing to finish this roof. The ridge cap. 
As you can see, there are gaps between the strips where the strips meet. I don't want my ridge cap to dip because then it will likely tear as the children play with it. So I strengthen the ridge by using my cutoff strips to place between each long strip. I did this to both sides of the roof. Finally, I can add the ridge cap and I have lots of contact to glue it on. I'm using just a piece of poster board that I had on hand. Poster board is thin, so it can very easily be folded in half. I didn't want to use anything thick because it's hard to fold something thick. I crease the fold before gluing it on. Now the roof is complete. I still have a little bit of finishing on the structure of the house to do, like covering the raw cardboard edges so that it has a cleaned, finished edge. I left that for last because I still wanted you to see that, yes, this is a cardboard box, even though it doesn't look like it anymore. You would be surprised what you can make out of paper and cardboard. I have not spent any money on materials to create this dollhouse. All the supplies I had on hand. Granted, at one time I did buy the map board and poster board, but I've had them for quite a while. Because I frame artwork, I usually keep a ready supply on hand. The only thing I had to go out and purchase was glue. Still to come are making stairs, kitchen cabinets, curtains, beds, chairs, tables, and other furnishings to complete the house and perhaps dolls to live in it. I will continue to use found materials at home. If you want to follow this project, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post another creative video. I hope you try to make a dollhouse yourself using these video tutorials. I'm already planning the next house in my head, which will be far more complicated than this simple house. Thanks for watching.